I'll show you how to make miniature bricks for a wall, foundation, fireplace, or whatever else you may need. I'll teach you the basics. You can create a variety of different looks and make bricks in different scales. I'm using thin, adhesive-backed cork from Amazon to make the bricks. The cork I'm using is like a big sticker backed with shiny paper. I'm covering up the adhesive backing and replacing the shiny paper with computer paper. You can draw a grid the size of your bricks depending on what scale brick you're making directly onto the paper to use it as a pattern. If you draw your pattern on some graph paper, it'll be a lot easier to keep your lines straight. To save myself the trouble of measuring, I used a Word document to create a 1 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch 112 scale grid. I left a column of bricks one inch long and you'll understand why later. To attach the piece of paper to the sticky backing, I'm folding over about one inch of the shiny paper exposing the adhesive. Once I get the long edge lined up, I can stick the rest of the pattern down. Covering the adhesive back isn't just a way of attaching your pattern. You'll see later in the process, this will save you a lot of time when it comes to installing your bricks. I linked a video in the description so you can make your own grid as well as the measurements for different scale bricks. I forgot to do this until later in the process, but you want to cut off any cork that falls outside of your grid because those bricks would be the wrong size when you cut them out. To prepare for adding color to the bricks, I'm cutting my sheet into three pieces. I'm making each section a different color so my bricks will have a variation of shades and look more natural. I'm making three different colors of brick, but if you'd like a wider variety of colors and shades, just cut your cork into more pieces. I'm coloring my first piece with some shaved chalk pastel. Chalk pastels are very inexpensive and really useful, so they're worth the investment if you'd like to make miniatures. For this first shade of brick, I'm using only one color and I'm using a small brush to apply it in a streaky manner. I went a little overboard, but you can leave more of the cork showing for a variation of color. To keep the pastel from rubbing off, I'm sealing it with matte Mod Podge. You can use Elmer's glue instead, although it may be a little shiny, and you can also try hairspray or a fixative spray. For the second shade of bricks, I added some brown and left more of the cork showing. To create some variation within the same piece, I added some areas of heavier red and heavier brown. I'm using acrylic paint to color the third piece. I mixed equal amounts of burnt sienna and deep red and I'm applying it in an intentionally splotchy manner. Before cleaning off my paintbrush, I added more interest to the first piece I made by dry brushing on some of the brick red. Now we're ready for cutting, so I cut off the one inch long bricks and set them aside. You can use a craft knife to cut out your strips of brick, but I prefer to use scissors because it's faster for me and still precise. The most time consuming part is rounding the corners of the bricks. The first option is leaving the brick attached to the strip, cutting the first two corners and then cutting the other ones. I'll show you a comparison of a rectangle brick wall and a rounded brick wall later so you can figure out if it's worth the time for you. For the second method of rounding the bricks, you can cut out all of the bricks first and then assembly line style cut the corners off. The third option is my preferred method. I cut out all of the bricks and now I'm using my craft knife and a cutting mat to cut the corners. It took me an hour to cut the corners on all of these bricks. Preparing the one inch long pieces took far less time. I cut out all the pieces and only cut off two of the corners. 
keep your color separate if you're making a pattern, but I'm doing a random brick wall, so I'm mixing them all together. I will show you two methods for applying your bricks that give you a completely different look. I will call this first method the grout method. For this method, I'm laying the bricks directly into some white glue. I'm placing the bricks approximately where they should go and while the glue is still wet, sliding them into their final position. I'm leaving a small gap between the bricks for the grout line. For the second row, I'm centering the brick underneath the grout line above it. I suggest working on a small section at a time and add more glue if it begins to dry out before you can place your bricks. This method for applying the bricks is a lot faster than if I was peeling the backing off of each brick and sticking it down using its own adhesive. This is why I prefer to cover the adhesive back with a paper pattern. I eyeballed the placement of the bricks by making sure the grout lines stayed in line with one another. For the grout method, I'm sealing the bricks with some matte Mod Podge. This preserves the color of the bricks for the next step. The Mod Podge is dry and now I'm adding some grout in between the bricks. I'm using a little plastic spatula and squishing the spackle directly in between the bricks and scraping most of it off of the surface. I'm making white grout lines, but you can add some paint to the spackle to give it color. Since I sealed my bricks, I can use a damp paper towel to remove most of the spackle from the surface of the bricks. If you don't seal the bricks, the spackle will leave a white haze, which might be the look you're going for, so try both methods and see what you like. I'll call this next technique for applying the bricks the mortar method. I'm mixing a small amount of my spackle with some white glue to make it thinner and also stronger. Since I'm working on a small piece, I'm covering the entire thing with the mixture, but if you're working on a larger project, you'll want to add it a small amount at a time so it doesn't dry out. I'll be placing my bricks in the same pattern I did before, but this time I'm using a paintbrush to press the brick into the mortar so it squeezes up between the grout lines. I did some googling and found out this is called an extruded joint. If you don't want your mortar to squeeze out between the bricks, don't press them in as far. The shiny paper originally backing the cork can't stick to the spackling glue mixture, which is why you need to replace it with paper. If you drop a brick in the wrong place, you can pick it up with tweezers and clean some of the glue and spackle off of the back and place it again. You can play around with making the ooze of extruded mortar bigger by placing bricks further away and sliding them up or applying a thicker layer of spackle. So far I've only shown you two dimensional bricks, but I can use these longer bricks to wrap around a corner to give the bricks dimension. For the section of brick I want to wrap around a corner, I added the longer pieces and allowed the spackle mixture to dry. I mixed up some more spackle and glue and I'm adding it to the edge. To create the 3D look of bricks, I'm folding the brick over and pinning it in place. Since this cork is self-healing, all of these holes disappear. My cork is pretty old and dry, so the edge is cracked, so I'm filling that in with paint. I finished by cutting off the overhang. If you're wrapping the bricks for the grout method, you could also use pins or glue them with hot glue. Here's a comparison of the two methods. The grout method leaves a small amount of spackle in the texture of the brick, and the mortar method leaves the brick face clean, with optional mortar squeezing out of the joints. I created another sample using the mortar technique, but this time I used rectangular bricks so you can see the difference. It takes much less time to leave the bricks rectangular, so you can decide whether rounding the corners is worth the aesthetic. I made this heavily aged brick using rectangle bricks and grey mortar. 
If you'd like to make some gray mortar, it's best to mix black into the spackling glue so you don't dilute it too much with gray paint. Here I used gray mortar, rectangular and rounded bricks, as well as some plain cork colored bricks. I made a sample wall using brown mortar in the mortar method. I'll show you a couple easy techniques for aging these bricks. One of the best ways to age anything is to use a wash. I made a simple wash with black acrylic paint and water. I'm adding the wash concentrating around the perimeter of the brick to age the mortar lines and also add a shadow around the brick. Washes tend to look a lot darker when they're wet but dry more subtle. I added some more aging by dry brushing with some off-white. You can also dry brush the bricks before you cut them out. For any outdoor bricks, rustic or otherwise, it's a great idea to add some flocking for texture and color. When I'm adding flocking to a miniature, I like to mix some white glue directly into the flocking instead of adding the glue and then sprinkling flocking onto the surface. If you're going for a white wash or painted look, you can apply the bricks directly to glue like I did in the grout method. I used a mixture of rounded plain cork and red pieces. Depending on the look you're going for, you can apply the grout, wipe away the excess, leave it to dry, and call it done. I'm painting my brick white for a rustic look. You can make the paint completely opaque or wipe away some of it like I am here. You can remove the paint unevenly for a more rustic look. For the 1 6 scale brick, I used graph paper to draw a grid that's 5 8 of an inch by 1 and a quarter inch. To cut the corners off, I used scissors and rolled them around the edge to make a rounded shape. On the smaller bricks, I just cut the corner straight across, but you can tell at this scale. You can tell by the little speckles of white in the brick that I finished this using the grout method. I left some links in the description so you can get your own cork, but you can use the grout or mortar method to apply egg carton stones, styrofoam tray bricks, or cereal box pavers. If you'd like to make bricks with more dimension, make sure you check out this video.